Rothstein has won the game, and he and Barry split. Now it's going to be Stuckey and Barry. Seems to be a controversy here about something. We can't really pick up what it is. They're deciding what's going to happen if so-and-so beats so-and-so. Dick Stein is gesturing and talking to Stuckey. Only one here for the same person to win both. Mike Dickstein is here, and he has a few comments on his match. These guys are good. They're real good. Mike Stick Dickstein, we must admit, uh, remind you, has been out of practice for a few months, so he's had a very strong showing for not having played. And, of course, not having played in a new table, none of us did, but uh, the Philadelphians. We are joining... Uh, we are joining Barry and Stuckey here. Stucky has possession and whips in a cut shot. Such powerful shots he has. The fast style of Stucky versus the smooth and moving style of Barry. Probably the fastest of the Philadelphians. Puts in a beautiful cut shot. Bob Dubasan is here and celebrating. Bob. Bob. Bob Dubasan's awful happy about something. What is the news? Hi. My name is Bob Dubasan. What? As we watch the match, Bob Dubasan's going to explain what happened in the sea. Well, we had a round robin this afternoon. On the table, we had a very, very tough uh, set of opponents with Ralph Moore, Phil Arnold, Bob Dubasan. Just to name a few that were on our very Paul Berger on our table, I managed to come out with only one loss to Paul Berger and end up with a number one seed this afternoon. Paul Marshall on another table is the number two seed going into the tomorrow's final play. Hmm. How, mu how many games did Arnold lose on your table? Arnold lost one game on a table before he played me. Then I beat him two straight, so he ended up with uh, three losses on our in our group. So he's uh, he's tied with with me, Robbins. I'm 15 and three also. So we may have a few ties here. One interesting point of air hockey information, Jesse Doughty finished fourth on his table. That's right, fourth. Mike Berry's injured here. That dynamite mallet of John Stuckey. Berry is slightly injured, but he's shaking it off. Is it in the groin or is it in the hand? Looks like the thumb got hit with a hard Stuckey shot. One of the hardest shooters, and these tables are a little shaky at the moment. Barry is back. Where'd you end up? Table shuts off because of time, put in another quarter. Back to the interesting piece of information. Jesse Doughty finished fourth on his table behind Paul Marshall, the surprise John Gunn, and Oh, and Robert Hernandez came in third on table number two. John Stuckey with the puck. 
Six to six, it's tied. John Stuckey's come back from a 6-4 deficit. Mike Berry in control. Here's Phil Arnold, who's tied with Robbins for in seeding. At this point, the Chappelle quotient will either determine it or a playoff. And Mike Berry puts in a cut shot to win that game. There's one more game left in this match. Bring you an interesting announcement. From over here on the third group table, Roth Moore and Bill Buck are tied for fifth spot. They will be playing off to see who is guaranteed a spot tomorrow. Interesting. We have a three-way playoff here between Barry, Dick Stein, and Stuckey. They're playing a two-game round robin. The loser will go for the wild card. The other two will be guaranteed for the finals, which start tonight. How long do you think it'll be before the finals start? We're anticipating uh, about half an hour, 45 minutes. We're going to, as soon as everything's over, we're going to get playoffs done and get the charts made up and go. I understand that it's Paul Marshall's number two seed. Paul Marshall's number two, Dubasan number one, and it looks at this point like Arnold and Robbins are tied for... I hear Gunn's only lost three. Gunn has lo only lost three? I think three. he won 15 and lost three. Hmm, then he would be tied too. John Gunn, what was your record today? Uh, 15 wins, three losses. John Gunn was 15 and three too, so Robbins, Arnold, and Gunn are tied. An amazing performance by Gunn, an amateur. Jesse will be 10th, 11th, or 12th seed. And therefore, one of us will play him. Jesse Doughty will be 10th, 11th, or 12th seed, it appears, having lost five or six games today. That's the national champion, Jesse Doughty. Back to the match here. Stucky's fighting for his life. If he loses this, he could be out of the tournament. Ooh. Joe Campbell was down. He was hit hard. We're back. Joe Campbell was momentarily stunned. He's okay. This is crucial for Stuck. Stuck puts in a bank shot. Using a green Lexan puck, I believe. Painted white on top. Goes in on Stuckey's goal. Stuckey puts in a beautiful forehand shot. Jesse Doughty on looking and refereeing. Stuck charges and Mike Berry gets possession. Five two Berry. Goes off the table. Barry's possession. Stucky stuffs Barry and make it 5-3. Stucky's bearing down now. Stucky gets possession as the puck pops off the table. Beautiful forehand bank. It's 5-4. This is tight. This means a lot. Barry misses a bank. And the puck flies off the table. Attention. And Stucky puts in a moving puck. Whips it in there for 5-5, five, five, and Barry puts in a forehand. It's 6-5. Stucky's puck. Okay. 
and a beautiful bank, and it's 6-6. Stucky struggling here. Beautiful shot by John Stuckey over the mallet left wall bank, and he stays in it. here on the round robin playoffs. They all tied after the two game round robin and we're back. Stucky lost the first game to Mike Ferry. And now it's four all. These two guys have always been tough competitors. It seems to me Robbins has always come out in a tournament when they play each other. He's playing good air hockey right at the moment. I don't know what Dubasan's feelings are, but I think he probably be very much dismayed with himself, pissed off himself, if he loses this. I'm sure the pressure's on him. He needs to win two games straight. Like to keep the puck on the table, exhibiting a little displeasure with that. So here we are still at four all. Back to the action. Here's Mr. Hernandez, who's showing himself to be quite a player at this tournament also. Robert, do you have a few words for us? Oh, uh, unfortunately, I don't know much about this match. I was playing before, and then right after, I had to ref another match. Uh, it surprised me that Robin is, you know, winning at this point. Not that Dubasan is better, just that in the past few months, Dubasan has been such a strong player. Perhaps you'd care to give us your comments on the Stuckey-Arnold match. I knew he'd be tied. Uh, I had a, I don't remember who it was. I think it was John, uh, John Williams, California, who said that if it went seven games, he was pretty sure Stucky would take it. And, uh, I really didn't know. 6-6, six, six, uh, three games apiece. I thought it was a toss-up. Uh, Coming back on Arnold is certainly a feat hard. worth a, a good congratulations. He, he gets up for it. He gets up for coming back. So we see many of the grand. air hockey fans we've got another great match for you in this euphoric 
heavenly wonderland of air hockey greatness. On the near side, Robert Hernandez. In the loser's bracket after being defeated by Jesse Dowdy. And John Stuckey playing fantastic air hockey. I didn't get a chance to see his match with Arnold because uh, I was playing Dubasan and preparing for that at the time. But he came back from a 3-2 deficit, winning the final game 7-6 against Phil Arnold, who was the undefeated first seed after the first day's round robin. So Phil, uh, I believe, uh, ties for seventh and eighth at this tournament. Sort of disappointing for Phil after playing so well yesterday. But uh, two Boulder players, Robbins and Stuckey, knocked him out of the tournament. Stuckey uh, playing fantastic, came back on Rudy from 3-0, Rudy Hernandez of Houston, af after getting shut out the first game. Came back, won four in a row, and last one 7-2. Then he came back on, on Arnold from a 3-2 deficit, winning. We uh, are sorry we didn't capture that match, but nobody got it, and they were on Dubasan and myself, which probably wasn't nearly as exciting, at least in the early rounds. I told Stuckey that I try to use his cut shot and over the mallet banks and just... Uh, Watch out for Robert's quick release. That's all you can do. There's some controversy here. You'll probably know whether it's been resolved as to whether Pam Paddock is the national women's champion or not. <clears throat> Pam's very upset about it, and some of the, the other women are. We hadn't set that up in advance as to whether there would be a playoff or simply the, the highest finisher. So. Stuckey has won the first game, 7-3. Anyway, it looks like probably Pam Paddock will be declared National Women's Champion as a result of her uh, being the only woman to even place in the finals. Uh, but there will probably be a challenge match, at least by Nancy, soon. Robert has those quick, beautiful right wall, excuse me, left wall over the mallet banks with that deceptive flat mallet, sort of loose grip he has. Just sort of swivels that mallet around. Stuckey seems to be defending very well. Looks like Stuckey's onto another one of those amazing uh, tournaments he had, like he had a uh, little over a year ago in Boulder where he took fourth place, finally running out of juice after having Marshall down 3-0, and Marshall came back and beat him. Marshall went on to take uh, third in that tournament. It's 1-0 Stuckey on that forehand cross straight. Beautiful shot. And then in Chicago, you might know, Stuckey uh, was in a wild card playoff for uh, the last seed, excuse me, the last qualifier. have to make that clear. Uh, in the... Finals, pro finals, having lost uh, a lot of games on his table, and he lost two to Dave Walker, and he lost two, two to me, one of which he had a pop out at 6-6, at, at six, six, which on a brown table, if you recall, that tournament's on a brown table, is very unusual, but uh, he lost in a wild card playoff, Rolf was the, uh, the final entry, so he, and he took third in amateur, and here he is back here, proving that he is an exceptional pro. And actually, me and Dubasan are very shocked because Stuckey's been playing somewhat, uh, I would say for him, lackluster the last six months. You know, uh, not varying his game. and But uh, this tournament, he's been very tough. And Look at that. Forehand bank to the near corner. That's the kind of stuff that he has to do. He's not overhitting the puck too hard, which he sometimes does, causing it to fly off. It's 4-1 Stuckey with that forehand straight on a moving puck. Robert gets a pop out.
5'2", Stucky. Bob Dubasan's walking over here. We just had a tough match, and I just wanted to prove that you haven't got me completely figured out yet. Although you did have a rough time on one game with a lot of pop-outs and table and uh, puck problems. Well, we've been playing a long time, and when, when someone has a is on like defense you were tonight and and played the way you did on defense, especially. Uh, Excuse me, that's seven two for Stucky that game, and he won the first uh, seven three. Yeah, this is an amazing match here. Isn't this a little, uh, you know, we never ever would have thought that's that stuck. You know, I said that he's been playing sort of lackluster the last six months. Well, Except I, for, he, you know, he's been building a fire within himself that he, he waited right to this weekend to, to show. And through the guise of the video and all the, the work he put in with this, we still didn't even know what was uh, teeming and steaming inside him. And now we know that he has conserved his energy to explode at the right time, the right place. And uh, I just wish I knew what, what he was eating because I needed some. I hope this will uh, clarify to everyone involved, including Stucky, that Stucky is a exceptionally great air hockey player. He's putting in forehands on moving pucks, uh, forehand left wall banks and stuff like that that are fantastic. He's not overhitting the puck, uh, deceptive. Oh, oh, I want to look at those. Oh, God. Ooh, nice inside bank. 3-2 her name. Well, one, thing, one thing I'll take a little credit for. I really told, the one thing I told Stucky today, I said, the one problem you have is don't slow down, and even when you're tired, and keep the puck slowing down to a still. Keep moving. And, every, and all day today, that's the one thing I've noticed different, other than just an incredible stop. So, oh, um, just a left wall bank right around Hernandez and Mallet on that. Uh, last minute shot, which Stucky's not really that good at normally, so that means takes a lot of puck control to stay on the puck that long. Yeah, it and seems hold like it his out. timing in terms of when exactly hit the puck and get the guy to come out is okay. better than he's shown us for. for uh, well, what uh, interesting thing he's doing, he did yesterday, I think, to his detriment. Uh, um, interesting he's doing right now is a lot of wrist back and forth, almost Dowdy style back and forth and a uh, real loose wrist and he's normally a, a power player yeah and he's working uh, sort of working a power game into it from a, like a lot of front shots um which is amazing it's an interesting combination i say you think uh stucky is a better brunswick player than he is a brown top player or do you think the fact of who's playing great has nothing to do with which table because he has played, you know, uh, various ways on the Brunswick. He's had bad turnips, but he did have, super, did have. Superficially, I'd say uh, yes. He's a better. I mean, looking at player. Chicago. Yeah, superficially, I'd say yes. Uh, Chicago's kind of unique because uh, that's his first tournament. That's the first tournament I think he played away. Did he go down to Houston yet? He hasn't been down to Houston. Yet. Oh yeah. Yeah. He uh, took, um, I think, uh, uh, twelve or thirteenth. Something like that. Was, that was his first match. Yeah. You know, it's interesting though. A lot of people uh, from the dark horse, where that we have the brown table, say, say that the brown table keeps the puck better, holds the puck on the, on the table better. And, and, and since Stucky hits so hard anyway, it seems like the brown table might be better for him because he doesn't need the air to flow uh, that much to get power. Well, the, uh, the brown table at the, at the uh, Dark Horse right now is a, show, a showpiece for uh, air table hockey. It, it, is, it is the future of air hockey personified in that it is, it is n real nice and close to uh, Brunswick and, uh, and getting up there in speed. Plus, you would think that, that Stucky, since since pop-outs, Stucky, 7-4 Robert. Getting killed with a, a, a center bank inside uh, off the right wall. Uh, inside sh uh, short, no, it's not a short bank, inside corner, but around the uh, middle of the table. Uh, about, uh, think about a foot back of the center line. Oh, it's a little farther back in there. It's about one third back. Ooh, ooh, nice shot. Well, that's the other side. Yeah. Here's Phil Arnold. He might have a few comments on uh, John Stuckey's performance today. John has never been quiet. Like, 
as Phil said of me once at a tournament, and here's so-and-so who's never out of words. Well, I feel a bit out of words today. Happy having such a good day yesterday. Of course, we don't want to talk about me. But we will talk about John Stuckey, who is using very powerful forehands that we're scoring on Robert earlier. And uh, Robert, though, is beginning to get a low bank that is screaming underneath Stuckey left and right. And I think if Robert can continue to do it, he will pull this match out. And Robert was telling himself, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. And he just did it. He did another low bank underneath the left side of John Stuckey. Stuckey has been eating those left and right the last game. But Stuckey does leave two to one. It looks like Stuckey is sort of forcing some of his forehands. And Robert's quickness may, yep, there it is again. Yeah. Left bank over there underneath. And Robert has one of the best ones when it's working. You can't see it coming because he mixes it up with motions like that off the other side. So um, Robert is super concentrating, but you can't fool around with John Stuckey. I don't forget, I don't, he can't hear the score right now. Phil, you might uh, describe quickly what happened with you and Stuckey. How did he manage to beat you? Well, he managed to beat me because, uh, well, he played great. But if I had to criticize myself for a lack, I'd say I, I lost the, uh, the real will to win after I won the first game pretty easily. And that sort of blew my mind because I, I won it very easily and I relaxed and then I let the next game get away and probably the next one. And then when I began to have to win, it was difficult to get back up to that high level. It was a problem with killer instincts, which faded from me. And uh, then as it went down the last game, uh, Stucky uh, shot a shot. I switched into an old defense I used to use and it left my right side open. Well, now we have a point. Mounting a mini comeback here. Yeah, he is trying to come back here. But can he do it against Hernandez, who's so fast? And Stucky looks a little slower than he did at the beginning of the match. Yeah, it looks like he may be tired. Just a little tired. He just had a hellish match with Phil Arnold going seven games. He's eating Robert on that side, 6-5. Like and that means Robert is right on the other side now because he's been burned three times on, the, on his right side, so his left side would be vulnerable. Stuckey may go to it any second. Robert has the puck, and he puts it in, and seven, five. And Robert Hernandez has rallied here to a piece, to a piece. Will he be eliminated from the tournament, or will he be able to hang on? No, no fair, Phil. No fair for Robert to hear this, and it's not fair to our audience. Millions who are going to have to hear that voice in her ear forever on tape. That's funny, I don't hear any. I want a challenge match with Robert Hernandez. Hernandez trying to win. He needs this game. And we have Paul Berger here from California with a few comments about John Stuckey's game today. Well, John Stuckey's playing excellent today. As I said earlier, he, he knocked me out of this tournament. He had me 3-0. He knocked me out, too. Yeah, he's knocked out a, a number of people. And every now and then, and he certainly has the ability. Maybe we underestimate him, and, and he bites us because of that. I think he's out to get us all this tournament. He's, he's already done very well, and it's certainly not over yet. We come to the tournament in Houston in February. Oh, absolutely. Once again, uh, John Williams is the winner of the uh, winner's bracket in the amateur division.
Hernandez is up 5-1 on this game. Doesn't look like John uh, is, is being quite creative enough right now. This is Mike Berry to my right. Do you have any comments on this, uh, on this match, Mike? Well, I was going to ask you what was going on. What's the score? I believe it's 5-1 still. Robert Hernandez. What is it in games? Uh, that I don't know. Okay. Robert's playing good today, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he's playing great. He's playing great.
John Stuckey is down four to three in this crucial sixth game. Down three to two in the match. Robert came back with those bank shots to take three games in a row. Stuckey seems to be missing on that forehand. Robert's picking it up. At 4-3, Stuckey regains possession of the puck. Excuse the uh, crackling sound of uh, food packages, but your commentator is eating dinner, unsalted eight grain chips, hoping to give him energy for the match ahead with Jesse. Five, five, see what Stucky can do. Can he come back again? As he has before against Arnold and Hernandez, Rudy Hernandez. And he knocks it off, and Robert will get the puck. 5-5. Five, five. A break to wipe the sweat off the table. Bill Buck, referee, in the picture for a minute. Onlookers here include uh, Paul Berger. We're sitting here with Bob Dubasan, who just lost a tough match to Mark Robbins. The second time today that these two players have played a very tough match. Bob is physically exhausted right now. I can see it in his face. He just said he just went through his whole dresser full of T-shirts today. He's got his last one on. Yeah, it's just been a hard-fought and sweaty day. Uh, Mark Robbins uh, and I go way back in air hockey, and... Uh, We've been through thick and thin together in uh, the Boulder air hockey scene and as we've gone through different places, uh, Houston, Chicago, and, and a lot of action in Boulder. Um, in many ways, we're sick of playing each other, and it's kind of interesting. We have to play each other in a national, so we play each other on a regular basis in, a, in Boulder. You get to the point where you know each other's game, and it depends on who's hot and who's, what's working at a certain time. And what, what you can come up with to show the guy at that moment. Uh, he showed me his patented super defense that had been missing from his game <coughs> um, since, I would say, last year. Stop a second. We had a little break here. Bob is uh, trying to get a little <coughs> nourishment in his body. Some delicious beer here. It's going to make him feel good, but he's choking on it. Mark and I go way back. He plays a defensive game. I play a, a mixture game, defensive and, and offensive, um, out defense. And uh, he played me two different ways today. We first met in the, uh, like, the quarterfinals, and, uh, or earlier in that, and uh, he played a total back on me. Which worked real well. Uh, I just couldn't penetrate it well enough with either straight or bank. Um, I even went to a Jesse offense, which was uh, successful to a degree, but when I get start getting totally bored with it, it's really hard to keep going. <laughs> Whether I could do it or not, I get bored with it. Um, and then in the, uh, the game matches now, I played a, a 
a much tougher match than it looked like on the score 4-2 with Robert Hernandez, who just got wrists of uh, just utter just quickness. Um, and the man can just fake you out of your jock uh, unless you're just really on on defense. Well, it's, it's taking every fake and following it and keeping your defensive position takes a lot, wears a lot out of you. And then I had to play within about a half an hour, pushing it out because of Jesse's lovely airline schedule. Um, play uh, Robbins again, and I'm afraid just the old expression, the horses just weren't in a stable, and uh, I just didn't have the, uh, the strength left, which to add to the crispness, uh, you need strength to really hit the puck crisply, because you have to add so much force and thrusting through the through the puck to add that crispness. And if you don't, it just comes out a dull, mediocre shot. You can set it up perfectly, but if the shot comes out dull, especially if someone knows your game, it's just not going to work. Whether you get possession or not, you're just going to keep doing dull shots, and the guy's going to sit there all day. Well, it's basically what happened. I, Robbins, I still outshot Robbins, even with a fast game, but out shooting him and not scoring doesn't do anything. Um, I really hope that he can beat Jesse. I, I think he's probably psyched himself out by now which is a shame because, as he mentioned earlier, he's proud I beat Hernandez because he knows that I and uh, Mark are about one of the two few people in the country that can beat Jesse. And it's a shame we have to play each other. <laughs> We'd rather both play Jesse. Um, but we were talking earlier concerning the winner's bracket and the loser's bracket. Last year in Chicago, you played in the winner's bracket. You went all the way through and then met Paul Berger in the end, in the finals. We were talking about freshness and stamina, like you were saying, not enough horses in the stable. We were talking about the amount of extra effort and work that you've got to go into in the loser's bracket, especially if you go into it early, and the extra amount of games you've got to play. And that seemed to show today, as you had to go into the loser's bracket and play Hernandez, then Rube Dubisa, or Robbins again, and uh, it, it, it seemed to be the, the same sort of thing last year or in uh, June of 81 at the Dark Horse when you went into the loser's bracket and came back out to beat, to work on Jesse. But you were so tired in that final match that uh, it was a very tough one for you. There's one difference, though. I went into the loser's bracket one level earlier this year. Last year, I went undefeated to Robin's position with Jesse in a different bracket. And then we played in the uh, the first semis, I guess you could call it. So I was the last one into the loser's bracket last year. This time, I was one of four level going in the loser's bracket, which is an extra match. The extra match um, was against Hernandez, you see. Uh, the, the thing was that the Robins was, was so much better this year than it was last June. Um, to me, it's totally inexplicable, but because of all the problems of running a tournament, and uh, he had some family bad news today, and called relatives, and and after not playing particularly well yesterday, um, I just totally tip my hat. I just I am so so much in admiration of Robin. As, as much as he's pig-headed about a lot of things and wants to run everything, to me, his accomplishment of beating Arnold after losing straight three yesterday and coming back and beating him straight three today. And not say four, right? And not stopping there. Could have stopped there and going, uh, satisfied. But he's a veteran, and you don't get satisfied if you're a veteran. You, you know that ladder, there's only one person that can sit at the top on the ladder. And in the middle of the ladder, it's no fun. You want to go, you have to go up. Right. And only a veteran knows he, that. He did click today. He did everything. All of a sudden came on, and he's been playing very good defense and really crisp moving shots and his, his good flow game. Well, you got to understand, it's absolutely amazing because his arm is in terrible shape. He's got a heavily taped, which has got to restrict his movements. So he smartly said, I'm going to go with just an absolutely super defense, a la almost a Warren. Uh, he didn't just then. He went more back to his regular game. But you got to understand, he's playing with a restricted arm. His, arm. his muscle's restricted by the tape, so it doesn't have full power. So it's got to, the accuracy's got to be so important because he doesn't have full power. Uh, I'm just really impressed about it, and 
I didn't give him an inch. And you can see in that last game when he had me like 5 1 at one point, I came back to at least four points with a totally new type of setup on offense. I'm not going to give up. And I, I just didn't have it. And uh, I just hope that even if he goes to the last point, without him, if he loses, he just fights the last point. And that's all you can ask. And I, I tip my hat to you, too, because you fought like a tiger today in this whole tournament. And you had a Sunday to remember, too. Thank you very much. We've been talking with Bob Dubasan, defending national champion from Chicago of 1981. Bob has not defended his championship, but he has lots of tapes and lots of thoughts to think about for the February 83 championship in Houston. Jesse, better come to Houston, because I'm going to be there. And I want you. I want you. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> John Stuckey, Bob Hernandez. The first game, score is one all. It, Bob Hernandez, 2-1. Robert's doing 3-1. Stuckey's got to pick up those shots. Come out and charge a little bit. Got to not let him get the good shots. He should have hit it against the corner, try to get possession. Got to be careful. Got to pick up those shots early. deep stuff. Gotta put him on goal. Gotta put him on goal. Playing a little too fast right now, I would say. Because he's not hitting the goal. He's getting a lot of possessions, but he's not getting him in the goal. He's coming back, but he's got a long way to come back in 6 2. The forehand's lethal, but he's got to try some short banks. Oh. First game, 6 4. Robert Hernandez. Seven four. Robert Hand Robert Hand. Second game coming up right here.
Here, you want hair? Bop. Shot drifted left, came back to the right. Got to put him on goal. Got to put him on goal. Nice shot left. Possessions here by soft shots. Nice save. Incredible save just now by Stucky. Beautiful shot. Do it. Do it. 7 5, second game on Stucky. Games are one off. Stucky looks good. Stucky looks good. He waited on a On him now. Gotta to, got to be able to wait a little bit. Nice save. Can't afford that. Two, three. Three off. Six up, he's come back. Tied up six off. Tied up six off. Very interesting. Crucial game here. Crucial game. Oh, beautiful shot. Absolutely beautiful shot. Do it. Do it. Mix it up. Seven six. Stucky. He now leaves two one. Want any tape or anything? Okay. Stucky leads two. He, after losing the first game, came back and won the next two. 2 0. Very interesting match here. Brad. 2 0. 
Hank, a match right next to us, Paul Marshall and uh, Mark Robbins is now two all. Robbins is ahead, two one. Paul Marshall's come back. They're taking a long time on their match. Upcoming match, Dubusan and Dowdy will be played real soon here. match is going to take longer here. out and fake. Oh, he can't let those go. He's letting the puck go sometimes. Nice shot. Six five, hell of a game. Oh, wide open. Ah, come on, come on. Four games are two all. Real great match. Excellent match. And it's two all and Paul Marshall and Mark Rob. <laughs> Hope sport fans are enjoying this match. John Stuckey. Bob Hernandez. Shot off too. Two, two zero. Robert Hernandez. Robert Hernandez. Fourth game. Uh, fifth game. That's two all. Beautiful forehand straight. Excellent shot. You don't see that too often from uh, Bob Hernandez. Ducky got to put those on goal. He's starting to get a little flyy now.
Looks like he's got to use more forehands. He's not using enough. Got to use more forehands. Got to get more shots in. 